Hello, hello, everyone. All my friends are in the chat. Hello, Krista, Madge, Carol, Krista, let's see, Gretchen, Denise, Beth, Kim. Hello, Kim. Let's see, Lisa is here, Madeline. I know Lori is here. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome in. There's Stella and Carol, Donna. Let's see, Julia, everyone is here. Hello, it's so fun to meet you all on Monday night. Hello, hello for, from wherever you're joining us from. We have lots of uh, springtime goodness to share with you. Um, we're doing a springtime card tonight because I'm in spring mode. So tonight I'm going to be sharing a new stamp set, stencil set, and... Uh, the coordinating dies that go with it. And it's a little collection. So I love the little collections, super fun. And it is springtime, yummy, floral goodness. Let's see here. Okay. Before we start on that, I have some things to share. And I want to first share our class that will be on this Saturday. Can you believe it is already almost, we're, we're gearing up towards the end of March. So March 23rd is our free class. We're going to be creating the card that you see here. You can uh, create whichever version that you want to, whether you want to do the little standalone mailbox or you can put the mailbox on a card as I've done in the pictures. I'm going to show you how I ink blended all those. And as I always say to all of our friends here, you can either choose to use the same products that I'm using. You can pull out whatever florals you want to ink blend. We just want everybody to come together, have a great time together and just um, create a card, create something. Okay, and then next, I have a beautiful card to share from our friend Lori, who is over in the chat. She created this adorable little Easter card with the little bunny and some of the little eggs and the tree and birds, and she's even got little clouds in the background, and I love how Lori incorporated the little spotlight design there in the oval with her little scene. She's got little pearls and everything is so adorable. Adorable. I love seeing everyone's cards and everything that uh, all of our friends create. So keep those coming in, email those in, and I will share it if it's okay with you guys. Okay, so let's go down here to my desk view. And first, let's talk about things that we have seen in our live streams that we've already done. So this 3D embossing folder is called Sandy's Garden. And I created with Sandy's Garden, the lovely layers hummingbird, along with the across the miles, a uh, little sentiment set flying across the miles with a birthday wish. And so this hummingbird if you caught this on the live stream, super easy to put together. It's It looks complicated, but it's really not. It's a really easy, lovely layers bird to put together. And of course, you can color it any way you want to, and it turns out adorable. And then... The other day, or Wednesday, I created this birthday card. Now, traditionally, or really, this is an add-on stamp set for our vintage gift card box. But I, with my little stamp sets that go along with that gift card box, I like to create cards. And so I created a card with that stamp set with the little candles, added some stickles in there. And this um, little add-on set is really reminiscent of like a vintage candle box, like a birthday candle box. You'll see the little 15 cents here. There's a little stamp that says 12 count, like the number of candles in there. And then these candles that are in that set are pretty good size. So really you could do like a whole card of just cute little candles, lots of different ways to use this stamp and die set, whether you want to create a card or put it on the box that, you know, um, originally, you know, it's supposed to go on. But I just love how this little card turned out. And of course, you're seeing some of our really bright, fun uh, pattern paper. Okay, 
So tonight we are going to create a card with the new, it is called Bees and Bonnets stamp set. Now this stamp set you'll see here, and I only have a couple of the floral stamped and a couple of the little critters, but this is supposed to be a little bit whimsical, um, a little bit artsy, and I have the blue bonnets, and then these are poppies stamped, and then there is a bee, there's a few little butterflies in that set, there are some sentiments in that set, but what is so cool and what is so easy, and I'm going to show you the whole set here, and it's going to be a, maybe a little bit hard, let me get my darker piece of paper here, is the stencils. Now the stencils are going to make it easy for me tonight to color everything in, but um it just makes it easier for us because we can kind of whip it together. If you want to add in all those little details or colored pencil or things like that, you can do that. If you don't want to, then it's quick and easy to whip together a little card. But you'll see here that we've got several different florals. We have the blue bonnets that I'm going to do tonight. We have the poppies. We There is a... Um, daffodil and then there are like the little bluebells it may be kind of hard to see with the glare but there's little bluebells there's a bee a hummingbird there's some extra little flowers and then there are two different little butterflies and then not to mention the sentiments that go along with this set so tonight's card i am going to be using the blue bonnets and the poppies. Now, if you'll notice, there's some little fun things hiding within the flowers. So you may see here, this little guy is a little easier to see. See the little ladybug here that's kind of tucked up in. But if you notice, if I kind of point here, in some of the little flowers, there are the little bee behinds, like they're like down in there getting the pollen. That is a little bee that is collecting pollen in that little poppy. And then we've got our cute little guys over here. So I am going to actually flip this around so I can set my whole um, little piece of paper down and then we're going to get to stenciling kind of all together here. Okay. So bees and bonnets. Now there is a, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five stencil set. Super easy to use. I'm not even going to really mask anything off. I'm just going to kind of hold it up and shimmy it around. If you like to tape yours down, you can do that. Now, all of our stencils, uh, those of you will probably know, and it's going to be a little hard to see. You'll see that this says layer five. Honestly, for this set, it really doesn't matter what um, step you go in first, you can just kind of lay it down and do your thing. Um, you know, some stencil sets will require you to kind of follow the steps. These are not really like that. So I'm going to hold up first. I'm going to do these poppies first. And I am going to hold the etch lines that you can kind of see down in here. So even where it is not cut, the holes are not cut, you're still going to get the design. So it's super easy to line these up and then color in your images. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hold that down here. And with the poppies, I'm getting all my ducks in a row over here. So for the main color or for the all over color, I am going to use worn lipstick and I've got my dirty brush here of worn lipstick and then I'm going to go in just a hair and add a little bit of darker color in there. So let's get all of our little open spaces and I'm going to twirl my brother, uh, my brush, my brother, my brush this way and that to kind of fill that in a little bit like so and so this is what we have so far so if you wanted to leave your images just like that you could do that and it would be a-okay I am gonna step it up just a hair 
So I'm going to get that kind of set into place. Now, let me show you a new little treat that we have at Honeybee. And we have what is called our Bee Lux blending brushes. And they come in three different sizes. So we've got our traditional brushes like you've seen me use a million times. But now we've got some little uh, detailed blending brushes. So these are the smallest. And then we have like a medium size and you'll see the tips. I haven't even taken these out of the package yet. And then we've got a larger size. You'll notice that the brush tips are angled. So it allows you if you really want to get like the really fine tip into some small little areas you can do that. And I'm going to show you kind of the way that I like to use them, but everybody is going to kind of figure out, you know, what they like to do. Okay. So I've got my stencil set over the top here. And then I've got, this is abandoned coral ink. So it's just a hair darker than our worn lipstick. And I've got my little detailed brush here. You can really see that angled tip there. Really nice long handle. So it gives you um, a lot to hold on to. And I'm just going to really rub that little brush tip around. Now, when I take my tip, I like to use the that little tapered in down there, that little fine in, because it's going to allow me to kind of scooch away. So normally you would kind of hold it like a pencil, like so. I like to like flip it up, almost like it's upside down and really get those angled tips or that little point in there. And then I'm really going to go to town and add some darker pigment into certain parts of these little poppies. And I'm not going to do just a whole lot, but add some right into the center there. And then I can add some into this big poppy here. And it's almost time, I think, to add some reinker into my abandoned coral I noticed today as I was kind of playing with these here. And then now this time I'm going to take it right around that little bee's body and kind of darken up right around those little edges. Just like so right under his little bum there and darken that up. And then this one that's really flipped up, this one's gonna be a lot easier to really drag off of the stencil. So I'm really gonna be able to just get down here towards the base of that flower and kind of hit it that way. And then we've got the little bud here. And I'm again, I'm just gonna drag right there at the base, just like so. Now I can pull my stencil back and we can kind of see what we've got. So we're starting to get darker here. We're getting some darkness right in there, right in the center, and then right around that sweet little bee's body. Okay, so I'm going to put abandoned coral away. And then also on this stencil, if you'll notice, if I kind of hold it up here, is the little... Um, Ladybug. I almost forgot that little guy's name, the little ladybug's body. So I'm going to hold that down and then I'm going to first hit it with, let's do the worn lipstick. So I'm going to kind of go over that and give it a little rub down just like so. So now we've got our little ladybug. And then let's see if there's anything else that I need on this one. Nothing else that I need on this one. So I'm going to set that stencil aside. <laughs> And then I'm just going to grab the next one. So on the poppies, this one is going to start being the uh, wings of the bees and then the blue bonnets. So I'm going to overlay this and I'm going to line it up, get my little bee all lined up here. Let's line up my little flowers here and i'm sorry if tonight if my crazy head gets in the way 
I'm really trying to get over the top of these stencils so I can line everything up. Okay, now this brush, now this is going to sound crazy. This is my Uncharted Mariner brush. And a lot of you know that I am all about using like a dirty brush. And so I'm just going to hit that with that really light blue. And it's not going to look like a whole lot right now, but it will in just a little bit. Now, the other little bee that's kind of zooming around here, his little wings, we need to get them too. So I'm going to kind of adjust and hit his little wings right there. And again, you're not going to see a whole lot just yet. Now, our blue bonnets. So I'm going to move right over the top of my blue bonnets, make sure all my little bits and pieces are all lined up. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Uncharted Mariner, but instead of really going to town like all over the flowers, I'm going to start kind of from the bottom and I'm going to brush up because blue bonnets are darker kind of towards the bottom of the flowers and then they get lighter towards the top. So I'm going to kind of give it a brush up little bit like so. Now while I've got my stencil down, this is where I'm going to take my nice little tiny brushes, my detailed brush, and I am going to take, let me find it in my little stack here, I'm going to take faded jeans. And this is where we can really start adding in like if we want to darken it up and I'm going to again, I'm going to flip that, that little fine point that it has right there. I'm going to flip it almost upside down and I'm going to start flicking on the faded jeans and that's going to add the deepness where it makes it look like those little blue bonnet petals are deeper towards the bottom than they are on the top. So let me go here and I did not choose a very good, what do you call this grip mat size for tonight. I just grabbed grab and go, but we're going to make it work like they do on project runway. We're just make it work. We're just going to go with it and I can kind of, we're just going to keep dipping and flicking dip and flick. That should be like, a little technique, the dip and flick. Okay, now if I pick that up, you're gonna start to see where we're getting some variation in color there. And again, in real life, the real life is always gonna look better than um, what it looks like on camera. Okay, let's take, let me put my little detail brush away. Okay, next stencil. Now this has got all of our greenery, so our leaves for both the poppies and for the blue bonnets. So I'm just going to overlay here, make sure I get everything pretty well lined up here. And then I am going to take my Rustic Wilderness brush and I know that I'm probably going to have to dip into my ink. So I'm going to pull it over here, do a little dip here, and then let's make sure everything is good to go. Everything is covered up. And then I'm just going to start swirling, swirling right in there. Now I'm not trying to go like super heavy dark because this is going to be springy and bright. We're going to pull out some of the new pattern paper, maybe get a little bit darker. I'm not going to do anything fancy on the leaves or anything. A little bit darker down in here just with some little flicks. Okay, so let's pick up. And let's see what we're looking like here. All right, so see where we've gotten really deep and dark right down in here, but up towards this little bud and this little leaf right here, it's a lot lighter. So it looks like we've used a couple of different colors, but we really haven't. Okay, now let's do the leaves and the stem for our blue bonnet. 
So I'm going to line everything up. And I'm going to hold everything over the top. Try not to get my big old head in the way. And then let's go a little bit deeper. So you can go press a lot harder on your bristles wherever you want it darker. Down in here. And then kind of lighten it up as we just kind of fade up into the tippy top of that little blue bonnet. Work it down and around and then if we really want to add some pigment we can kind of give it a few little flicks down here and then let's see what we've got so we'll pick that up and then we're starting to get lots of color all right okay now let's see what else we have on this stencil let's see our little bee nope nope we're looking good okay so let's go ahead and move on all righty now we're starting to get into um, filling in some little details of our little critters and things like that. So first, let's go ahead and let's get our little bee's body. So I'm going to line him up. And this time, I'm going to use mustard seed. And let's go ahead and use one of our cute little brushes since we're doing a tiny little area. So I'm going to get those bristles all good to go, line up my stencil, and then I'm going to flip up from the bottom again. He's going to be pretty yellow right in there. There we go. And then I know as well, let's see here, I need to do my butterfly's body. Okay, so that's all for that one for now. But let's do... The butterfly's body. So let's get this all flipped around. I'm going to line him up. And we could really do that in any color. I'm going to grab, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these little detail brushes again because they're so handy. And this time I'm going to go in with black soot. So let's get that nice and inky. And I'm just going to dab, 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 right in those little tiny holes, and then pull it up. And then we also need to do the little dots for our ladybug. So I'm going to line this up just like that. Dip, dip, dip. And we can get this little head and then get down into those little holes for the little ladybug's body. So colored in his head and colored in his little spots. Okay. Now let's see here. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything else there. All right. So let's do this time. Okay. We've got the ladybug's body. Or what's under the wings. It looks like the wings in the back have been opened just a little bit like this. And so I'm actually going to use, I think, the yellow so it stands out just a little bit. And again, I'm just going to work those little bristles right down in that little area. And then we've got a little bit of yellow. Again, I'll hold all this up. Let me come in. Let me come in just a little bit like this. It may be a little bit easier for you guys to see. So the little opening is right there. Do you see where his little wings split? And then we can kind of take it and these the little fine tip to the brush is just going to get right down in there. And the way that I have found myself using these little brushes is instead of holding it like this like a pencil i've been flipping it around because it gives me more control to like flick and kind of get those little bristles like down in the little spaces but you'll kind of um you know figure out what you like i guess all of us kind of have a little style i guess to what we like okay i'm going to take my little black detail brush and I'm just going to brush on, and I may need to dip again. Maybe not. No, I'm just going to dab just like that. 
into that little B. And then let me see this little guy. So I can't forget this little B. We, Lisa and I and Melissa, we've been calling these little guys that have their little butts sticking out. We've been calling them the little B butts. Um, let me see what color I want to do this. Um, yellow. I think I want to do, let's do black here. We've been calling them the little bee butts that are stuck in the flowers. Okay. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to start flicking up because I want him a little darker on the, on his bottom side, like down around his belly than the other side. Okay. And I've, I, I'm going to have to go back to him, I think. Okay, our little butterfly. While I've got this stencil. I forgot about the little, the little bee guy. Okay, so let me take my yellow brush again. And let's do a little pounce in there. And this is that mustard seed again, so the yellow. And I'm going to take this again. I've got it flipped upside down. I'm going to take it from the bottom and I'm just going to start flicking up and make it maybe a little bit darker down here that what, what's going to be like the bottom of his wings than what is at the top or the tips. So really deep and dark right in there and then it's going to kind of fade. It's going to kind of fade out towards the top. Okay, now I need to find this little guy's, um, his other little piece of his body. We can't forget him. Let's see here. Here he is. Okay, so let's get him lined up here. I do not want to forget his little yellow stripes. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip up just like that. And then, of course, if you are, a, if you like to color, do you see him poking out of there now? And that's stinking, so stinking cute. If you're a colorer, you know, of course, it's going to be super easy to color these with your Copic markers or your pencils or whatever you like to use. Okay, so I've pretty much easy peasy got all of our little guys all colored in here. So now I'm going to start sticking down the dies. So I've got a butterfly, I have a bee, and then I've got my sentiment. Okay, so while I'm sticking these down here, let's see here. I'm going to chat with you. See, it's so detailed. Hello, Bo. I think the brushes make all the difference. You know, I do a lot with my big old blending brushes, but I have to tell you, when you get little tiny things like this, like the little bugs and the little critters and, or, you know, you do the majority, like I did the blue bonnet here. Sorry, you can't see it right now. Like I did the blue bonnet and did the majority of a, the coloring with a big brush. And then you go in and you just want to flick some easy little details. And you guys know me, I'm all about like making it easy on myself. So, um, if I can make it look a lot fancier than what it really is or make it look like I've spent more time than what I actually did, that's my kind of craft right there is I want it to look fancy, but I don't want to. I'm, I'm the lazy crafter is I want to get it done, you know, super fast and and it be pretty easy. So now are these um, images or are these stencils uber detailed? They're not. But if you'll look at the way, especially like if you look at the way this little bee is drawn, they're very like artsy. Like these would be adorable, I think, as I was looking at these today, like watercolored, like loose watercolor because they're kind of loosey goosey in their, um, the way that they're drawn. And um, I think that would be beautiful, like that watercolored. Um, but you know me, if there's a stencil, I'm going to use it. So, okay, so let's flip this sentiment around and let's get this in here. And then we're going to run it through 
all of them through the dye machine like all at one time. So let me make sure that I don't get this all wonky. There we go. And then let's take these all up just like that. Looking good. And then let's put this through the dye machine. Let's get everything to fit in there. There we go. All right, let's see here. The brushes. Yes, and the, what's so funny is they're called the B Lux. They're not the D Lux, they're the B Lux blending brushes, right? Okay. So let's get all these. Let's move this little guy. Let's get that out of the way. And then we can pop all of our cutesy little things out here. And our butterfly and our little bee that's flying around. Okie dokie. All right, so let's go back over here. Now I've got all my little parts and pieces here. Let's move all the brushes out of the way. Okay, now let's talk about our little setup that we have going here. So this is a brand new piece of pattern paper. And this is from, let me tell you, I don't want to tell you the wrong name. This is from our Textiles and Textures Celebrate. And so I bet Lisa wouldn't mind me sharing this with you. And so I'm going to hold it this way because my screen is uh, wonky. So same color scheme as the Let's Party paper pad, which you saw a lot of right here. But this is going to be more of a, like the textures and the things that are going to be good for die cuts and things like that. Like it looks like paint, lace. We have like a gold foil. There's like marbles and there's all kinds of good stuff down here. So whether you want to use it for a simple background or you want to do die cuts and lovely layers and things like that out of it, a great little paper pad and it's going to match your uh, party paper. Okay. Oh, and there goes mine. Okay, so I've got a white card base here. I'm going to add this green. And then I cut out a simple, um, like, scalloped rectangle. You could use whatever. And then this is kind of what I was thinking here. I was thinking that we could set up a little uh, bees and bonnets do you see the little dark flicks there like every once in a while that with those little brushes? I was thinking we could set up like a cute little flowery little framed scene. And we don't want to hide our cute little bee butt that's on there. So we can kind of do something like this. Kind of have a springy little garden going. And, and also this stand, well, you noticed in the stencils that there's a few more flowers in that set that you, if you like to do, um, not vertical, but horizontal cards, you'll be able to kind of stretch them all the way across your, um, card. There's plenty of flowers to do that if you wanted to use all of them. And then we've got this little guy that we can figure out where we're going to stick him. But this is kind of what I'm thinking. And then my little sentiment to my dearest friend that we're going to stick, I don't know, up here somewhere. Okay. But I thought it was kind of bright and happy and easy to create. Okay. So let's start putting the, all this together here and let's see how we do. All right, so I'm going to flip that over and you're going to kind of look at the back side. It's a pretty like limey green. Let's see, lovely layout. Let's see, love the card. Like, okay, good. Hey, Keiko. Hey, Gail. Perfect for spring. Yes. Or a little Mother's Day card even. Like, you know, nothing too super fancy. A friend card birthday card. Let me think about what sentiments are in that set. And I think I've already put it like off to the side somewhere. 
but it's like, oh, like this kind of stuff, like friendship type of little things. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up. And I'm just going to make sure that we're not too wonky here. Oops. There we go. All right. So we've got that. Now we've got our little rectangle. Now this guy, I think if I could find it in my mess. So we have been like deep in the release, um, what do you call it? The release, we're in release mode, um, Honeybee Stamps is. Um, so my craft room is a nightmare right now. I am right now filming the videos that you guys will see, start seeing, oh man. I got to get on the ball. What is it? Sunday? You'll start seeing the video? Not. Is it this Sunday? No. Yes. Oh, my word. See, that stresses me out. So I'm deep into videos. And my room, when I start doing videos, looks like a bomb has. Oh, my gosh. Something just crashed in my backyard. That sounded terrible. Um. My room, my craft room looks like the, a bomb has gone off when, um, when I'm like in this mode, like video mode and I clean up just enough to like start the next video and then make a mess all over again. Okay. I think I'm going to pop these up just a little bit. So I'm glad that you all can't see like what's around me because, oh, you, I would be embarrassed. Okay. So these little guys, I'm going to kind of let them, I'm going to use this stitched line as like a grounding spot, but I'm going to, I kind of like where it's going to hang off just like, you know, outside the lines just a little bit. And then I'm going to do here too. Okay, so let's get a couple of these. So let's put one there and one there. Let's say here, you'd be appalled if you saw my bedroom. That's where I mess my stuff with. It looks like a crafter puke product. You know, well, there you go. We're, that's why we're friends. It's because it, it has to be. I'm going to put the little bee butt right over there. And then we've got some little hanging off the side right there. So we're, we're kind of matching sides here. There we go. Precious. Okay. Now I want to put my sentiment on first because you guys know me. I get so involved in like all the little cutesy flowers and all the little things that the sentiment, you know, you would think us card makers, like the sentiment would be like the, the, the most important part. No. Oh. Not on my card. You, don't, you know, I get so involved with all the little cute things that the sentiment, I'm like, oh, darn, I forgot to stick that on there. Forgot to put that. So I'm not going to forget today. So I'm going to tip to my dearest friend. And I think I'm just going to kind of do it like right around in here. And I'm barely going to stick that down there. I'm going to make sure we're all good and straight. Now I can play with these little guys. Let's see here. I'm going to do the little butterfly. And and then I think I'm going to stick him like up around in there. Like that. And then our fat little bumblebee. Let's see here. There we go. Let's see here. Great place. Thank you. Okay. And then this guy, I think I'm going to kind of nestle. Hmm. Let's nestle him right around in here. Back in there like that. Okay. Now, I think we need a little something. 
So let me find my little stash here. If I can find them. That's what did I tell you about my craft room, friends? This is going to be the, the trick on can Kelly find it? Um, let's do, let's see here. Let's use these. Okay. So these are our newest pack of gems and they match the let's party paper pad. So like this paper pad, well, they match both, but you know what I'm saying? Let's party. I'm going to use the gems and I think I'm just going to add just a little like boop, boop, or like right here on these little, um, poppies. I'm just going to trim off the top here. Oh boy, you know me and the gems and all the blingy stuff. Okay, so this is this is what this is the hardest part is okay, the pink would be pretty and a little pop. That's kind of an orangey color. And then we've got let me kind of hold them up here. And then there's kind of like a buttery yellow and then more of a citron yellow, green, blue. Uh, pink and then this is more of like an iridescent um, over here so what this is always the hardest part for me is like what color okay this is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a medium iridescent in this guy and then this guy right here he needs a baby one he needs a small one because he's kind of flipped over. And then I'm going to nestle just a couple. So I'm going to nestle one, maybe, let's do, this is the hardest part, I swear, is the gems. Okay, one, two, three, and let's do four, and let's do one more. Let's do another medium size. And let's do one maybe right. Let's do one right up in there and kind of tuck it in. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to have them nestled right down in there in amongst our little flowers and things. And there we go. Bees and bonnets. Okay, now let's go back here. So let me move this little guy over here. All right. Love this so much. Yay. I meant anyone we give a sort of a dewdrop. Yes, a dewdrop. Exactly. It's just it, we're doing blingy dewdrops tonight. That's right. Okay. Let's see. Show the brushes, sizes. They uh, come in. Okay. So, oh boy. Here we go I'm on Kelly's messy disc. All right. So, this is the smallest and this is not all of them but one is, has gone a well let me go back here okay so this is the smallest size all right so this these are the ones that I used to get like down into the little ladybugs back into all those little fine little pieces and you can see here do you see how even on the B and the dark, do you see how it's darker down here than it is up here? That's because I used that fine tip right there and I started flicking from the bottom up. So it's able to get in there and give you some little details like that. And so, and then here is the little tapered tip. You can really see it on the, on the one that I haven't used there yet. So this is the smallest. And then we've got size seven or what I'm going to call medium size. And let me, oh, these have, I haven't even opened these yet. You guys are getting the first look. Okay. Medium size. And there are five brushes in each pack. Okay. So this is the medium size. You can see they all, they all have the really nice tip. 
Okay. These are going to fill, this has a, a bigger handle on it. So if I lay it down here, you're going to be able to see where it's a little bit bulkier of a handle. Okay. You're still getting the really nice fine tip. And then we've got the larger ones. Okay. Oh, there's my other baby brush. Okay. And then there are the larger ones. Okay. So nice, big, chunky handle. We're still getting that fine tapered tip. And this is what we're calling a size 10. I'm sure it has to do with like the diameter of the brush, but I'm going to lay like the medium, the big one, and then the baby one here for you all to see the difference in the size and the handle. So this is a size five. This is a seven and this is a 10. And they all come in packs of five, but this one, you know, really nice. And they're, and they're the same for those of you that are wondering, they're the same soft bristles that are in our regular blending brushes. They're the same exact bristles. Okay. All right. So really cool. If you like to um, use, use stencils, I can see myself really using these. And, and I just opened them today. You guys are getting the very first look. I had to ask Lisa. I said, Lisa, do you think it would be okay for us to show our friends the new blending brushes? And she was like, yeah, sure. So I, just today. I can see myself using these on the lovely layers a lot when you want to go in and you just want that just little something, something, you know, that's that. And like stencils and maybe the edge of something that you just want to do just a little something. But um, yeah, so I'll, as, as I use these, I'll be sure to let you guys know like, what I'm using them on, how I'm do, uh, what I'm using it, how I'm using it. Just like I found today, as I was kind of showing y'all tonight, that I really found that I like to flip it over like upside down and flick away from myself with that little tip. So as I learn little tricks and things, I'll share that with you guys. All right. All right. Uh, Lisa, do you want to give us our winner for this evening? All right, let's see here. This is a great product for sure. It is. Little tiny, has a little detail. They feel real good in your hands. I think any of these little brushes would be great for the little birds. They would just to add just that little something on the edges. Will there be any new lovely layers in the new release? Yes, there's a lot of lovely layers in the new release. Uh -huh. Lots, 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 lots. Lots, lots, lots. Okay. Did Lisa give us the winner and I miss it? I hope not. Just remember, this is... Melissa worked hard to get the... She did work hard to get the brushes right. They had to be... Um, um, congratulations, Joy Cards! Um, she was very adamant that they match... The bristles match our big brushes. So she worked hard on that. All right. Congratulations. Oh, happy joy cards. That's even better. Okay. Happy joy cards. If you will email me Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I am going to send you a prize, my friend. And all of the rest of you, I hope that you will join me on Wednesday. Let's do, let's do a lovely layers on Wednesday. Do y'all want to do a new lovely layers on Wednesday? Let's do it. Let's do, let's do that. All right. All right. So join me back here and I will see you then. Bye-bye.